Okay, so further the mining, we've talked about the, 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 the miners going down there, but then there's the health effects on those same miners. Black lung disease is, again, sort of a notoriously horrible disease. Um, they say that uh, 1,500 former coal miners die each year from black lung. That's like the, the Titanic sinking, but next slide. When the Titanic goes down, it's headlines. When these guys die, nobody knows about it. They just die with a whimper, all alone in these like underfunded hospitals and really poor communities. That's really why we have cheap coal. That's why we can forget to leave the lights on all day long, because it doesn't matter. That's why we leave our computers on all the time, because we don't really pay for it. They're paying for it. That's why coal is so cheap. I'm not even talking about climate change. I'm only talking about the economics of coal that we have put the burden on somebody else's back and therefore we get the advantage of it and we don't even know where it comes from or how much there is or whatever, you know, so let's just do it. Let's have everything on all the time. In the municipal building in the summer, the air conditioning is on so high, we have to open our windows to get some heat in. <laughs> Sorry. Next slide. Yeah, that's right. And this is what it looks like, what those guys are dealing with. I'm sorry, I know that's, that's but that's, that's the truth. That's what our <laughs> wasteful ways are all about. Next slide. Okay, so then let's, now we've talked about the mining, we've talked about the, the mining, the impact on the miners themselves. Let's talk about the air pollution. I'm not even talking about the carbon dioxide, I'm talking about air pollution. So one of them has to do with, so emission sulfur dioxide of the entire electric industry. Coal-fired power plants continue to contribute almost all of the sulfur dioxide emissions, almost all of the nitro, nitro, uh, the NOx emissions, almost all of the carbon dioxide emissions, and virtually all of the human-made mercury emissions into our environment come from coal-fired power plants. That's why I have to chuckle a little bit. There is mercury in a compact fluorescent light bulb, and if we all throw them away, that's a terrible thing. So that's why we have to properly dispose of mercury containing compact fluorescent bulbs. But to be saying you're not going to buy a compact fluorescent because you don't want mercury, if you don't want mercury, switch to compact fluorescents. You're using 75% or less electricity because it's the burning of the coal that is causing the mercury in our environment. Next slide. Mercury is not a little thing. It's a huge thing. 25,000 preventable deaths in this country every year from the burning of coal. Next slide. So next time we're watching TV and leave the lamp on, while it's daytime and we go out to play in the snow and leave the door open, maybe we should realize that our actions have impacts elsewhere. Next slide. Kids are not just small people. They are more susceptible to the impacts of heavy metals like mercury. And that fetuses and pregnant women, it's always, it's always women, pregnant women, fetuses and kids. That's always who is most affected by most of the health damages from air pollution. And so therefore, maybe we should try to check our own selves and the, the modern uh, toys that we have, and maybe there are some limits as to what we want to think of that we can possibly, uh, possibly, uh, possibly use. So the mercury exposure also causes cardiovascular, so uh, for all of us, and uh, our immune and reproductive systems, high concentrations, of course, it causes mental retardation and a whole host of other awful things. Next slide. The largest source, as I just said, is from the power plants, and airborne mercury is deposited anywhere from just around the plant to within a few hundred, uh, a few hundred kilometers of the smokestacks, and it can actually travel across oceans. Next slide. 600 plus coal-fired power plants in this country uh, produce over half of our country's electricity. They burn a billion tons of coal every year, and they release almost 100,000 pounds of mercury into the air every year. Pounds of mercury, 100,000 pounds of mercury. Next slide. Power plants yield 80,000 pounds of mercury pollution in solid waste, plus fly ash and scrubber sludge, and 20,000 pounds, 20, pounds from clean coal before it's burned. That's a process that they, they put it in these pools and have to process it first, and that releases some of the mercury at that time. Next slide. In sum, as you can read, 200,000 pounds of mercury is what is really being emitted annually. 
The next thing, and that's just one aspect of air pollution, the next one is acid rain. You see how it works is that both sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide, when they go into the atmosphere, they mix with H2 with water and with oxygen, and they, come, they, they turn into acids. They turn into uh, uh, nitric acid and sulfuric acid, and therefore the particles come down, but especially when it snows or rains, it returns to Earth in the form of acid rain. Next slide. It's not a little thing. It's that the entire northeastern part of the United States and eastern Canada is being decimated. All of the plant life, especially in the natural areas, being ruined by acid rain. Next slide. You can see that in the Midwest, where most of the coal-fired power plants are, it's not around there. It's the, the, the prevailing winds move to the east, and so it's all around us, as a matter of fact, and north of us, where you see the heaviest concentrations. The darker orange means more acidic soils. That's the result of that. And up in the Adirondacks, next slide, this is what is the result. We're completely decimating these forests, the great northern forest that stretches from New York State all the way up into Maine. Next slide. The burning fossil fuels uh, also is contributing to climate change. But we've covered that, so that's fine. We'll just, just, that's all right. Next slide. Keep it going. That's all right. Keep it going. Yes. Keep it going. So, uh, so 4% of the world's population is us, but we put out 25% of the world's carbon dioxide. The largest source of it is from coal-fired power plants. That's for us to start to address. Now this is a community group that I met when I went down there. In uh, It's actually called Coal River Mountain. And these two women are heroes. They're nationally renowned heroes there. Lorelei uh, Scarborough on the left and Julia Bonds on the right-hand side took the time out of their day to, to meet with me and talk with me. Next slide. They, um, uh, with the, the, her famous note is, we don't live where they mine coal, they're mining coal where we live. They're coming into our communities, taking our, taking our coal and ruining our, our homes. These are coal mining people. It's the mountaintop removal that they don't like. They're, these are the folks that I was so pleased with. Their organization, just hold there Richard, is called Coal River Mountain Watch. And if you want to write that, that, that note down, there's a terrific organization, www.crmw.net. And next slide is another organization. What they want to do is instead of doing removing the mountaintop, they want to build wind turbines up there because that they're all for energy. They want energy, but they want to create jobs that last for a long time instead of taking off the top of the mountains and then the coal company moves away. So they they have a group called ColdRiverWind.org. And they want Lisa Jackson, our former head of the DEP here in New Jersey, who is now Barack Obama's head of the EPA, they want her to not give the, the permits. So if you would go to their site, they would give you directions on how to lobby Lisa Jackson. Next slide. This is another terrific organization called ilovemountains.org. It's a fantastic website. They've won awards. They are hooked up with Google, and Google has given them a dedicated site that if you go there to Isle of Mountains on Google, it will spin you right into that region and show you where the ruined mountains are, but also where threatened mountains are. That's where I find the, that's how I found the community to go to to visit.